Back in the garage today. In the garage. Back in the garage. Back in the garage today. What's going on guys? Back in the garage today, working on my 2021 KTM 890 Adventure R. In today's video, I'm gonna be deleting the cat and replacing it with an Aero mid-pipe. Now, not too long ago on Pete's Norden 901, we deleted the cat that we didn't show the how-to on that part and also replaced the stock silencer with an Acro. I'm leaving the stock silencer on my bike and simply replacing the mid pipe. So I'm gonna show you the weight savings. I'm also gonna show you what the sound difference is. And if you wanna check out the video on Pete's 901, you can click up here. So um, let's hop into it. Okay, so this is what the Aero mid pipe looks like that we're gonna be placing on the bike. I ordered mine from Rottweiler. I'll link that down below. No affiliation or anything, but if you wanna find this exact pipe. Also included in the pack, is a small hardware kit. We don't need a whole lot uh, outside of what's already on the bike to install this. And we also have instructions here for a KTM 790, 890 or the Norden 901. They're exactly the same, but it was nice of them to include both. Uh, let me go grab a couple of tools and we'll start getting this thing put on the bike. So we're actually gonna start out down here with the engine guard skid plate, whatever you wanna call it. In order to do this, hopefully you guys can see it, there is a vent tube down here on the right-hand side of the bike on a little plastic connector. We just wanna slide this vent tube off and then we'll go to uh, removing some fasteners. One more thing, I do have my bike set up on a rear wheel stand, which I remember coming in handy working on Pete's bike. First tool you're gonna need though is an eight millimeter uh, socket on a ratchet and we can start pulling off the engine guard. Okay, so while the included instructions are fine, I know how we can take this thing off and save ourselves a couple of steps. So I'm gonna start over here on the right-hand side of the bike. Up underneath here on your tank protector is an eight millimeter bolt. We're gonna start out with that and get that removed first. Before we move around to the left-hand side, we're just gonna stay right here and we have one, two, three, four fasteners here on the skid plate, engine guard, whatever you wanna call it, all eight millimeter. Now we're over here on the left-hand side of the bike, same thing with this fuel tank guard, eight millimeter. And then last but not least, difficult to get a camera under here, about in line with the bolt holding on your side stand. We've got two small eight millimeter bolts down here we need to pull out on the bottom of the skid plate. With these bolts out and your tube, your vent tube unhooked on the other side, you can drop this down and I'm just gonna move it out of the way for now. Next thing we're gonna do is remove the silencer. In order to do that, we need to undo this clamp here on the silencer pipe that's going into the cat. We're gonna use the same eight millimeter socket on it and bust it loose. Just make sure you hold on to this hardware because we will be reusing it. Once you get the bolt out, it's gonna be a little hard to see, but these two pieces just come apart and then we go to put them back on later. It's pretty self-explanatory. For safekeeping, we'll just put this bolt back in here for right now. Now we're gonna move up here to the top where we're gonna to use a Torx 45 bit on this fastener. Get this broken loose. Now you're gonna to wanna to keep a hold of this because once we pull this bolt out, We've already removed the clamp, so there's really nothing else holding it on, and I really don't want this hitting the ground. You can see it just falling into my hand there. We're just gonna slide this out, and I'm gonna set it aside. I know I mentioned this in a lot of my videos, it's always a good idea to have a piece of cardboard you can set your parts down on so you don't have to worry about them getting scratched up while they're sitting on your garage floor waiting to be put back on. Okay, so next up, we're gonna use a Torx 30 bit and remove our shift lever. Set this bolt aside for right now. Next up, we're gonna re remove our sprocket cover using the same Torx 30 bit. We have one here, we have one down here, and we have one down here. Okay, so with those three removed, we should be able to pull off the front sprocket cover. Set this aside. All right, so this next part is gonna be a little hard to see, but we're gonna use a Torx T50 bit on the swing arm bolt. We are not removing it, we are just going to loosen it, and you'll see what I mean here in a moment. 
and then we have three bolts that are holding on, you know, basically the side stand and your rear stay here, which is why you need, you know, some sort of stand to put the bike on because the side stand's coming off. You can see we've got a bolt back there. We've got one right here. We also have one down here. Again, I'm sorry, it's a little hard to see. These are all Torx 45 bits while the swing arm bolt is a T50 bit. Just a heads up, there is a spacer on the back of that rear bolt, so just set that there for right now. You can leave that bolt in there on the side stand if you want, it's not really in the way. This is what we needed, this is why we were loosening up the swing arm bolt, because we're going to be able to need to swing this in order to get some of these bolts that are holding on the, uh, the cat. I'm just going to use a 10 millimeter T handle. You could use a socket if you got one. We're going to take this upper bolt out first. Go ahead and take that spacer out with it as well. And then if we pivot our stay out of the way, we can see we've got another 10 millimeter bolt right here that needs to be removed out of the bottom of the frame, also holding the cat in. Now that we've moved over to the other side of the bike, it's going to be tough to show you, but you can see what my ratchet's on right there. That is a 10 millimeter bolt as well that we need to pull out. Hopefully uh, you can get a good idea of where it's sitting. And then we should be able to pull the bolt out. It's got a spacer on it as well. I suppose we'll find out for sure in a second, but I believe we have all the bolts removed. Now we need to get this other clamp removed that's attached to your header pipe, eight millimeter. Now we're just gonna try to, the clamp's not all the way off there. They didn't leave me much room. We're just gonna try to wiggle this. Still catching. There we go. And just wiggle it, drop down out of there. We can say goodbye to this uh, hunk of metal here. All right, so before we go to put this on, we need to get in our hardware kit and get this metal clip here. And we want it to go on in this orientation. Just make sure you got it lined up right so you can actually get this bolt through here. Should be good. And something else you're going to want to do, because we're not going to reuse some of these bolts and holes we used before. You can see I just pulled that uh, metal washer spacer out of there. You can leave the rubber grommet in. Did the same thing on the one that sits down in here. All right, so next up, we're going to start to get our new mid pipe in place. It's going to go in this orientation. So this is going to feed into the header pipe. This is going to feed into your silencer. I'm just going to get it, kind of get it mocked up, get the clamp on but I'm not gonna tighten anything at this stage. All right, so I had to fiddle around with it there for a minute, but we got the clamp back on, just finger tight at the moment. Now we're gonna work our way around to the other side of the bike to get the bolt in to uh, secure the mid pipe in place. All right, so now you can see the tab on the mid pipe. We need to put this bolt back in right here. I went ahead and put the metal spacer back in. I am going to reuse the factory bolt despite the fact they gave me a bolt in the kit, mainly because this is a Torx bolt, it's also a 10 millimeter, uh, same as everything else on the bike instead of having you know an Allen on there and then just an extra tool to carry or, or go get out of my toolbox. So we'll get this in next, again we aren't going to tighten it, we're just going to get it in and get it started. Alright, got it. All right, so before we start putting everything else on, I want to go ahead and again, I'm reusing my factory silencer, get it lined up, and then we're just going to go ahead and start this bolt up here by hand, just make sure it bites. Again, this is a T45, not going to tighten it down, just don't want it going anywhere. And then we're going to grab the clamp we took off earlier and get it over here. Again, not tightening it down yet, just getting it affixed on here. 
Just a quick update, because I've ridden the bike a few times and I wanna show you guys. Make sure you get this gasket. It may stick to your uh, factory catalytic converter like mine did. And I noticed I was getting a little bit of an exhaust leak, so that's my bad. Put this down on, uh, onto your new mid pipe, and then you know follow the rest of the steps. So um, just want you to learn from my mistakes. Okay, so now that we know everything is joined up, everything fits, we can tighten down this clamp, the bottom clamp, this T45 bit, and then also the 10 millimeter on the other side. I will list all of the uh, torque specs up here because I gotta go look them up. Okay, so my recommendation at this point, before you start bolting everything back up, skid plate, everything else, go ahead and start the bike up. Make sure you don't have any exhaust leaks. Make sure everything's nice and tight and then we'll jump into getting all the hardware back on. I'll show you guys the uh, before and after results after I get this done though. All right, so now we're ready to start getting things back together here. We're gonna, or at least I'm gonna start out up top here on my side stand bolt. All these bolts that use the Torx 45 bit, we are gonna, it's easy to remember, it's 45 newton meters or if you're using uh, foot pounds, it's gonna be about 33 foot pounds of torque. All right, so with the side stand bolt in, I don't want to tighten anything down yet because I need a little bit of wiggle room for this larger bolt, which is going to go through your rear stay and then into the side stand, and then it's going to go into the frame. So you got to get all this lined up. Then we can go ahead and torque this one down to 45 newton meters and then come back up and hit your side stand bolt, 45 newton meters, 33 foot pounds of torque, whichever way you want to do it. And then if you want, just to make your life easier before you tighten anything down, this spacer goes in behind and then we'll get the, uh, the bolt here going through the stay into the side stand here. Just tightened up with our fingers and now we can finally torque everything down to uh, 45 newton meters. All right, so we don't want to forget our swing arm bolt. We are going to torque it down to 100 newton meters. Keep in mind that is your T50 torque spit. There we go. Okay, so next up is our sprocket cover. Clean this up before you put it back on. Let me do that real quick. Okay, so with all the gunk cleaned up, we're going to get this back into place here. And then we have three fasteners that we're going to use a T30. Use a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads. I've got mine pre-prepped. It calls for five newton meters, but I'm just going to tighten them up. And then last but not least over here, we have our little T30 that goes back in to our shifter. I could not find a torque spec on this. Best I could find was looked like about six newton meters. So we're gonna go with that, put a little bit of Loctite on the threads as well. All right, now that we're done with all that stuff, we're gonna grab our skid plate. And we've got the four fasteners that go in back here. We're gonna go ahead and get them started, but I'm not going to tighten anything down at the moment. We're just gonna get things started. All right, so with the four front bolts in lightly, we're gonna grab the ones here with the little collar on them and get one on each side of the fuel tank guard. And then last but not least, we gotta get these little bolts in back underneath. And once you have all the bolts in, then you go around and tighten them all up. With all the fasteners hooked up, now we just need to hook up our little vent hose down here on this little tab. Got that on, we're done. Now I'm gonna show you the weight savings as well as the sound difference. All right guys, so that is how you delete the cat on one of these 790, 890, 901 KTM Husqvarna adventure bikes. So I'm gonna give you some, uh, some screenshots and some pictures here in just a moment. So let me hit the weight savings first. A little over four pounds. I'll put up the exact amount on the screen as I show you the scale that's on there. So a little over four pounds. Hopefully, you know, the thing runs a little bit cooler there because the, the cat does get hot. I don't know yet. I haven't ridden the bike, literally just finished working on it. In addition to that, let me, you know, I'm gonna give you guys some, some sound here in a second and then when we come back, I'll talk about the decibel differences. Thank you. 
So at idle, we're looking at about 10 decibels higher. It's a little bit harder to read when, when I'm revving the engine because it can fluctuate, but at least gives you a little bit of an idea, probably about 15 decibels louder when you're up into the power band a little bit, but right around eight to 10 decibels louder at idle. So for about 240 bucks, I think is what I paid for the mid pipe. You can drop four pounds off. You can get rid of the cat, totally up to you. Obviously off-road and racing purposes only. You can't run it this way on the road. You'll get in trouble for that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any questions about the install, let me know. If you want to know what I think of it, by the time this post, I've probably already made a video kind of giving you my thoughts on what it's like to have on there. But let me know down in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.